we've all seen uh, after the, the first COVID outbreak, uh, which of course led to several lockdowns all over the world, uh, we've seen the global economies starting uh, again with massive production uh, and huge exportation. And this is basically uh, the, the main issue of the problem because of course the um, shipping line were caught totally unprepared to face this situation. What, what caused the, the, uh, the biggest issues are the, uh, the port congestions, which were obviously uh, due to the uh, Suez Canal uh, drama early on in the year. That's, that's caused congestions, shipping lines reduction of uh, sailings, uh, producing uh, blank sailings. That, that's caused, uh, again, a shortage of uh, availability of space, and therefore uh, it, it's difficult to get on board. You know, we have had uh, a couple of the major shipping lines cancel services in its entirety for the month of uh, uh, June, July um, and August. So uh, some of them are now coming back online in September and obviously that will give uh, a little bit of relief. However, it's going to take some time before we get to the stage where, where the uh, shipping uh, uh, is back to where it was uh, uh, pre-COVID. We've also seen uh, internally the, the uh logistic system, in particular the, the railways, being extremely or severely congested, not being able to deliver containers for up to two or three weeks. In Italy, luckily, import or export, uh, uh, we don't have this uh, sort of problem. We do have a little bit of an issue in uh, finding trucks, which is the main means uh, we use in Italy to carry uh, containers, full containers, uh, to and from the port to the client premises. To give an example, while up until a year ago, uh, we could book transport with a transport company, any transport company, everywhere in Italy, uh, with one, two days tops free notice and we were fine. Today we have to give at least uh, one week notice to the transport company, otherwise the answer we get is we're fully booked, we can't accommodate your containers. Uh, not only shipping lines were at capacity, uh, but some of the shipping lines they were servicing Australia, uh, basically all of a sudden stopped accepting cargo because, um, as I said, it's, it's a global situation. Um, there has been massive congestion in different shipment ports and I'm talking about Singapore and Port Klang in particular. So we've seen, for example, uh, in uh, May, uh, Maersk, which is the biggest shipping line in terms of uh, volume of being moved uh, every year, basically start saying we're not going to accept any new container to Australia and New Zealand. Uh, then mid-July, Costco as well. So we were left with pretty much uh, three shipping lines only to uh, service our client. And of course, uh, we, we, we as a freight forwarder are also fighting against other freight forwarders for the same space. I would say up until the end of 2019, uh, you were paying uh, 700 US for a 20 and double for a uh, 40. Uh, you now have to pay around four and a half for a 20. Great. And likewise with air freight, you know, something that was costing sort of around the, uh, the three euro mark is now anything up to nine euros a kilo. Yeah, and that's if you can get on board an aircraft, you know, if you can find the space and if you can get it away. But ultimately, we, we all end up paying because of these uh, absorbent prices that the shipping lines are just constantly increasing. And and to keep the uh, the prices uh, at a high level, we're, we're finding that they're uh, cutting back on sailing. So uh, therefore, demand is great, but supply is short. As far as the sailing time, it's, it's pretty much for, for the direct services, it's still maintained, provided you can get on board, provided you can get a booking. The, the uh, 39 to 42 days uh, sailing to Australia from Italy is, is still current. You know, where, where we've seen some issues is more on the transshipment uh, scenarios, where we're going via Singapore, where, where the port of Singapore is so heavily congested that uh, containers could be sitting there for anything up to three to four, five, six weeks at times. Flights are empty, you know, there's, there's no people on board or very little people uh, on board. This makes Australia not a really profitable destination. And, uh, you know, there, there's very, very few airlines uh, that uh, at this stage uh, are keen flying to, to Australia simply because uh, while in the past they could count on revenue from passengers and revenue from cargo, today they only have revenue from cargo. So uh, what we've seen uh, is uh, airlines rerouting their fleet onto more profitable uh, destination or route. So therefore pricing for air freight has gone through the roof. It's it's at least a four, five, six times the value pre-COVID. And and the issue being space is at a premium because it's just the, the flights are just so rare when they're coming out to Australia. You know, in fact, in just recent times, we've had some cancellations of even the uh, uh, COVID relief for, for, for Australians coming here. So therefore, once again, it's reduced the um, uh, the opportunity of sort of getting uh, space into Australia. 
the biggest problem is not flights from Italy to the transshipment airports. You know, there is uh, one or two a day at least with every airline's views. The problem is the very limited flight from uh, the transshipment airport into Australia, for example. Uh, Qatar Airways, which is uh, at this stage, I think, the airline with most flights into Australia from Doha, because Doha is their hub, they only have three flights. Uh, while in the past you were getting the first connection, uh, today, because of the uh, demand, which of course is not matched by the offer of flight, you may have uh, to wait two or three days in Doha before you can catch a connection. So um, three to five days is realistic uh, from the time it departs from uh, Italy to the time it arrives or lands in Australia. So the recommendation we have for Australian importers is uh, to basically notify us at least uh, uh, a week or so in advance before the uh, goods ready date. So uh, if we know a week in advance, we can make an, a tentative booking or you know, a pre-booking per se with the airline. So by the time the order is ready, we do have the uh, booking with the airline in place already. And in a matter of a day or two, just the time to pick up cargo and uh, expedite the export formalities, custom clearance and so on, we can, we can ship your, your shipment. So one week uh, is, uh, is sufficient. Uh, seven to 10 days would be ideal. Well, to be quite honest, I don't see that there is a uh, uh, any uh, short-term relief. In fact, if anything, uh, the system is going to uh, uh, see a, a uh, even a greater impact because we're just coming out of the uh, European summer, you know. So uh, we're heading towards Christmas. So there's going to be some some real uh, uh, pressure on on the supply chain throughout the throughout the, the globe for at least the next three to four months. You know, there are there is discussions that shipping lines have purchased new vessels and new equipment, but these items are going to take time to sort of come online. You know, so my uh, at best prediction, I would think that sort of we're not going to see a real easing on the uh, on the supply chain till till mid uh, to late uh, 2022. CCMA, APAC, Lloyd, Maersk, uh, Costco and so on, um, they have put in place some countermeasures. Uh, of course, they're not uh, of immediate effect, uh, and I'm talking about purchasing new vessels, um, massive vessels, uh, you know, the, the new standard is uh, a plus 20,000 EU vessel, and all the main shipping lines have ordered several of these vessels. Uh, we've seen over the last uh, two, three months, shipping line also um, placing huge orders of new containers because you know this is uh, another problem we're facing uh, worldwide, not just lack of uh, space on uh, the allocated vessel, but also the lack of equipment sometimes, which of course you do have the space, but the shipping line is not releasing you the container because simply they don't have one available. So slowly, slowly, it should get better. I think we should at least uh, start to see um, reliability coming back up and then uh, moving forward also rates slowly decreasing. I'm not expecting freight rates uh, for sea freight or air freight for air freight uh, going back to pre-COVID levels. Uh, possibly air freight rates, uh, they'll go very close to what they used to be. But uh, when Australia will reopen uh, borders, of course, to, to uh, foreigners, I would say. But in terms of sea freight, I don't think that the rates will go any near what they used to be before, uh, simply because they were at a level uh, which was not sustainable for the shipping lines. So from being a uh, freight for borders or Customer controlled market, and I'm talking about the freight rate market, uh, has now become a shipping lines controlled market because, of course, uh, uh, they can dictate uh, what price you have to pay if you want to ship a container simply because you don't have any other choice, you know. To get in with your orders as early as possible so that way you can get your equipment. And, and items delivered in a timely manner. It's critical because it, there is a, a, a over demand and, and a shortage of supply. So it's critical to sort of get in in a timely manner to make sure that your products arrive on time every time. We, we've always said to our customer, uh, we should you know, be partner, not just a service provider. And I believe that in a situation like this one, with all the difficulties, uh, we, we couldn't speak more truth, truth to, uh, truthful about that. You know, we, we really should work together and, uh, you know, not uh, hide the details and so on. Uh, try to share as much as possible if an order is urgent or it's not urgent. Uh, if you do have a deadline uh, with your end customer, for example, let us know. Uh, we'll try to find the best solution for, for your business and for your shipment, for your orders. You know, that's, that's what we like to do. That's what we're here for.